weekend of the sliding season, the first weekend of the ski season here too as well. Nicely combined, a little bit of snow in the air earlier on in the first heat of our four-man bobsleigh. And lying in third place after a fast start and a couple of little issues down the run, Great Britain's Brad Hall, silver medalists yesterday in the two-man competition with rookie Aaron Gulliver, Taylor Lawrence and Greg Cackett. Things to tidy up for Brad, he lies 1500s off gold. The big story though has to be Taylor Austin with Shaq Murray Lawrence, Cyrus Gray and Davidson D'Souza Really his second World Cup start as a driver. He lies in second place, a tenth back from the lead. And the leader, it will come as very little of a surprise to you, is Francesco Friedrich with Torsten Margus, Candy Bauer and Alexander Schuller. A well-rehearsed, extremely fast and professional crew. But even Francesco having a few handling issues on this super-fast Whistler ice. Taylor the sled walking around a little as he was very intent in making sure the nose went where he wanted it to, i.e. online and not rolling over. We see from the lights there is still a little bit of snow in the air. Temperature is dropping again as the sun has disappeared. But Friedrich leads from Taylor Austin and Brad Hall. Can the group behind catch? Well, they probably can't catch, but it might be given away by those in front. So look for Vogt and Treichel and Harfer if his sled is fit to go, and maybe even Hansi Lochner to try and produce a result. Well, the air temperature, 0.3. I have to say, oh. I think it's a little bit close, yeah, uh, colder man. than that. There's Hansi. Ice temperature, minus two degrees, and Christoph Harfer, we're being told, will not go again. He is on the entry list, but uh, there was too much damage to the sled. He went through the outrun, straight over uh, the end of the ice, up the matting, along a concrete ramp and into a parking lot. No damage to the crew, other than maybe a change of underwear required, but the sled uh, definitely has seen better days, and I think the runners will be used only as right. doorstops right. in the future. Good to see the Swiss practicing their Morecambe and Wise <laughs> heel kicks. Everybody warming up in the parking lot before they get to go. I'm delighted again to be joined in the booth, as I have been uh, throughout this bobsleigh competition, uh, by Chris Spring, who once more has been forerunning for the event. <laughs> I, I throw to him as soon as he comes in the door and gets his headset on, without even contemplating the fact he might still be breathless from plunging down this ice track. Yeah, definitely. I'm... As soon as I put the headset on, I'm, I'm catching my breath, but I'm doing my best to keep up here. <laughs> And for all the listeners at home, hopefully uh, enjoying the commentating here this evening. Absolutely. Always good to have knowledge in the booth as well as enthusiasm and humour. OK, here we go. Nine sleds then on our start draw. No Christoph Harfer, unfortunately for him. But that means that there's a chance for Seaman Friedley uh, to have a very solid top ten finish. And just Haas, Greg Jones and newcomer Roman Fadley are the crew. Few mistakes in the first heat was uncharacteristically untidy, I thought. Yeah, and we see there a start of 4 8 8, just 100 quicker than their first run. But what you will notice is there is no snow falling in the track now. It's a lot clearer, and we're going to see some faster times down the track as well. So was it? A, did it feel a little quicker when you were just on it? Did it feel a little easier to drive or harder to drive? I wouldn't say that it was harder or easier, but it definitely felt a little bit quicker, especially down this bottom section that Simone's about to navigate now. Right. Speeds in the first heat over 151 kilometers an hour. You see here, navigates through that 50-50 curve really nicely. He's going to be reaching speeds. Yeah, look at that, over 150 kilometers an hour. Crossing the finish line here, 51, 34, definitely besting his first heat time by 36 one hundredths of a second. Looked a lot tidier. I wonder whether they anticipated the ice being a bit colder all day than it was in the first heat. Maybe the, 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 the track has come to them. Maybe it's just that he's got more of a feel for it in the second run. Yeah, to be honest, after looking at most of the field here on the first run, I noticed that a lot of the sleds were a little bit nervous, a little bit jittery on the track, and they were expecting these super fast times, this, this difficult track today, and it is a lot softer and a little, more, a little more forgiving than what the athletes perhaps were expecting, and then they just didn't adjust for that in that first run, but hopefully we'll see that here in the second run with some improved lines down the track. 
It's really tough, isn't it? You know, because you get there, there's no rehearsal, there's no practice before the event. Yesterday they drove it, but the weather was different, and they were in a two-man sled, so it gives them very little to go on. Next up, Frank Del Duca with Adrian Adams, Hakim Abdul Sabor, and Manio Mitchell. Manio made his two-man debut in Heat Two yesterday when Frank crashed in Heat One, and uh, Hakim was put on the bench just to make sure he was good for the four-man. There is the big crew for Frank Del Duca. And Manio making his four-man debut as well this weekend. So a big rush to get him fully integrated into the crew. Yeah, and they had fifth fastest start time in the first heat with a 4.87. Really solid time here. Let's see if they can improve on that here second time around. You see Frankie getting in pretty early making sure that they get good velocity and everyone's in and down in 489. I would say a little bit upsetting to see that they got in that early. They definitely could have ran it a bit deeper. Perhaps they were going for nice, smooth load, good velocity on that run. Well, Frank and the crew had two silver medals in the four-man races in the North America's Cup a couple of weeks ago here. So he's got recent experience, I mean, this season rather than just in the last year of the track. Yeah, and this run already looking much better. He's had a better six and a seven exit with that smoother straightaway. And as he comes into 12 there, a little bit of a tap. Oh, and it pushed away there. But again, handles it well like someone that's had a lot of runs down the track. And of course, we head to Salt Lake City, Utah next weekend, and then in two weeks to Lake Placid. So that familiarity will be growing, 51-4-0. And that is 1,300s better than their first run. So it's often the case, if it looks tidier, it tends to be quicker. Yeah, not as fast as the Swiss, but they had that first run advantage right. over them. Right. And that's Thanks why they come up home, on top much. at the bottom here of the track. See the exit here of seven. Not as low as he was first run around. Takes that one tap here on the left-hand side follows the wall and gets a nice entrance into nine. So we don't want to be going too late into nine. And so that tap usually helps us bring the sled over and up into nine. That was a uh, <laughs> <laughs> But they all are, Chris Spring. They all are on this track, aren't they? This is not an easy glider's track. Yeah, exactly. And you get to the bottom with a feeling of accomplishment for, you know, not just finishing the race and doing it successfully, but making sure you get down there safely yeah. as well. And with the boys behind you as well. Well, Frank, his career best is an 11th in the World Cup in his uh, previous two races, and he will be no worse than eighth. Next up, Cedric Follador, another relative newcomer, only his second ever four-man World Cup race. His first was in Lake Placid in January 2020, fourth in the North America's Cup races a couple of weeks ago, so they've dialed themselves into the track that they have never seen before, and he is on the brink of a top seven finish. And 4.92, another solid start. They're a little bit quicker than their first round effort. And uh, they were off first in the track. And so they had to deal with a little bit of that snow coming down. They were kind of known as the snow plow when you're first off. And they were in a good position here after run one. But they find themselves just behind Frankie in the splits right now. He's only had one World Cup race before. He was 20th there. He will be at least eighth place, ninth place here maybe. See there early on to 10 getting pushed away, but he's doing a great job here taking taking control of this sled at the bottom of the track. 400s back, it's going to be close. It is going to be close because these Swiss sleds we know are quick. Look, here he comes with the speed to take the lead. He does take the lead at the line. Yeah. 200s in it. Very close racing here. And again, not the fastest time of the heat. In fact, still the Swiss sled of Simon Friedli with the quickest, but enough of that first heat advantage to put him in to the lead. So six sleds to go. That will be a seventh play fini place finish, no worse. That is a huge PB for Cedric Follador. There is his number two brakeman, Nicola Mariani. And we see here exit seven again, taking that tap just before nine, pushing you over and in early. Does get a little bit unlucky there to have that skid. And this is what I was talking about, into 10. See how early he is, that back end of that sled wanting to lift up. And I have seen sleds roll into there, unfortunately, but today not the case for Cedric and his team. Well done. So they are the leaders with now six sleds remaining, as there will be no Christoph Harfer.
And next up is Johannes Lochner, a little bit out of sorts in the first run with Florian Bauer, brand new brakeman Georg Fleischauer making his World Cup debut. And at the back is Christian Rusp, who has done his entire career on the back of a Hansi Lochner sled. So he and Flo Bauer, very experienced. Their World Cup starts in the 30s now, in four-man alone. Yeah, let's see what he can put together here for this second run. This team a little bit disappointed with that start time, and let's see what they can pick up here. Wow, 481. <laughs> what? Not just a little improvement, a massive improvement. 12 100s, and you see it in the, in the velocity as well. Hansi and his crew, they're out for the podium here. Well, now this could be very interesting indeed because Hansi was four tenths off the lead, but 2,500 out of the medals and a clean, tidy run. I mean, he's already halved that deficit by going 1,200 quicker at the start alone. Yeah, exactly. And we see this line out of 10. Pretty nice lines here. He's got to get good control. He does into 12. Wow, this is really nice. A little early there into 14. He's losing a bit of time. Rocking and rolling, gaps down from 31 to 2600, should be two tenths at the line, it's more, Ooh, oh it's not! Wow, only 900 wow. of a second, lost a lot of time there at the bottom. Just 200 of a second on that run, quicker than Cedric Follador, and a full tenth slower than Seaman Friedley, so yeah, that, from 13 on down, it kind of started rocking and rolling a bit. Yeah, you had such a great run going for you, and sometimes you get this false sense of confidence. But like any track in the world, there are so many places that can bite you, and you have to keep that, that uh, confidence and that knowledge all the way to the bottom. Concentrate the whole way there. And we see on the exit of 13, he's working really hard, holds it off there early into 14, and we're going to see him work. Look at the back end of that sled sliding up. The crew in the back there just getting tossed around. Wow, what a rough ride for those boys. And at the, uh, the speed they're doing, the corners come at you so fast, if you're wrong in one, you're wrong in all of them. Yeah, and he knows a look at that. He's happy <laughs> to be done here. It probably didn't feel as dramatic as it looks from the outside, but yeah, Hansi Lochner, he leads, and we now have five to go. Next up then, Marcus Treichel for Austria. New boy Dominic Hanschitz joins Sasha Stepan and Christian Huber in the crew. Dominic in his third ever bobsleigh race. Looks about 12. Just for clarification, Dominic is not 12, he is 20. <laughs> Making his World Cup debut. Easier tracks to start on, but you know, it's, that's what it is. 489 getaway. Yeah, solid start and bettering their first run there by six 100s at the top of the track. And Marcus, I said, all week long has been having great drives down the track, and that's what's put him into this position within striking distance of the medals. Let's see what he can do down the track here through corner six. Nice high line, good transition into seven. And as a crew, they're brand new, well, well, with a new member, but they're going to get quicker and better and more synchronized. I mean, the other two are experienced, but they were Benny Myers' crew before, so it's, it's, a, it's a new team this year. Yeah, and we see here that, that team, it's coming together, that cohesiveness, and they're already up 900. And they have the speed at the bottom. They're going to open up this lead. Wow, three tenths at the bottom. Nice lines from Marcus Treichel there. That made it look really smooth. Yeah, beautiful run there. Yeah, the guys are, look, listen to them, they're so excited, yeah, really. Previous best ever in the World Cup race in the four-man, eighth place. This is a top five. Now, you, okay, you're going to say there's only ten sleds, Martin. You can only race who shows up. Can I just say the top three from the Olympics are, with the exception of Justin Cripps, are here. So you've got two Olympic medalists to battle, and he's ahead of one of them. Yeah, exactly. He's putting down a great run here. Good, solid race. And yeah, look at Wolfie there. Just really excited. Yes, yes that's yes. what he wanted to see from the team. Yeah. Great big, job. Big PBs and, and, and a, a much quicker start in the second heat as well. They'll be very happy with that. So that piles the pressure on our next leads. Marcus Trichel leads from Hansi Lochner and Cedric Follador. We have four to go. Mikel Vogt for Switzerland. 
Alan Nusser, Sylvia Weber and Sandro Michel. Aside from the German lineups, uh, this is probably the most consistent over the last couple of years. Even Brad Hall's crew have a new member in, but these guys have been racing together for the last couple of seasons. 3,200s off the lead, 1,700s out of the medals. Yes, in that recognizable fourth place for them, and hopefully they're going to put down a run here that they can walk away with, knowing that they've left everything on the track with a great start again, 486. And a beautiful line here into one. A little bit of a tap in two, but again, most sleds having that difficulty at the top of the track. Finished third in the North America's Cup a couple of weeks ago. Can he take a goal, uh, another medal here in the World Cup? This is where he had a little bit of problems in seven. That sled was sliding around a lot. Wow, he's really cleaned it up. Six one hundredths of a second. But Marcus was nice and quick at the bottom. Very smooth lines. Well, let's see where we go. He stopped the rot. He's creeping away from Marcus Trichel. This will be a career best World Cup four-man result if he finishes in fourth. Seven hundredths up. Maybe not enough for a medal. Oh. Just enough to stay ahead of Marcus Trichel. Well, there's two or three things we know. The FES sleds are always super fast at high speeds. The Swiss sleds are always good because they're built for Samaritz on the high speeds there. And Wolfgang Stamfer. One thing you always knew with Wolfie was the higher the speed, the better his sleds would cleave through the air. I don't know what kind of whispering he does on sleds, <laughs> but he's good at that. And that's why trichal speed was so high. Yeah, and we see here... As the slide comes out of 13, the guys are sitting really nice too. And at those high speeds, if you just imagine, you know, you're traveling down, your, down the highway here at 150 kilometers an hour and you put your hand out the window, that amount of drag, this is what we're trying not to create in the sled. And then the guys, the way that they're sitting perfectly behind each other, creating this beautiful shape of the sled, that's what's going to increase the speed down the track. Yep. So... Mikel Folk leads for Switzerland. Will he be the perennial fourth place bridesman? Doesn't work, does it? Fourth place man, or will he claim a medal? Three sleds to go. Brad Hall, rookie Aaron Gulliver, Taylor Lawrence, and Greg Cackett in the four man sled. Brad took a silver medal in the two man yesterday with Big T, Taylor Lawrence. Can they take another medal here? And I caught the truck out with Brad in between heats, and he was a little disappointed with the run on that first heat. Some Things to clean up in corners six and seven. So let's see if they can do that here on heat number two. 479, their first start. Do they find anything extra? 478, wow. they're always going for it. Yeah, beautiful out of one. Let's see what the boys can do here down the track. That's a really nice exit of two as well. We saw a lot of sleds having problems there, but no problems for Brad. Well, he was 1,700s ahead of Mikkel Vogt from the first. He already 3,500s up by the time he gets to corner five. Yeah, and this is, he's done a little bit more than he would have liked to have in seven there, but he gets away with it well. Only seventh best speed. That's not great news for Brad Hall. The gap will start to shrink. He's chasing the race leader, Francesco Friedrich. Yeah, but these lines are beautiful at the bottom of the track here. I haven't seen lines this smooth since Lamandine won the yeah. race here. Uh, the gold medal winner. And wow, wow, look at that. Half a second up. That is a huge run. 50.84. Graham Richardson applauds that. The boys are thrilled. Yeah, okay. that run would have left them in the lead after the first heat. And that is that is what he cleaned up there. Corner six and seven, really bringing the speed yeah. down the track. So his first heat, a 51.14. That's a 50.84. That's three tenths of a second quicker. And we see these four big boys that are all mad, you know, minimum 220, 100 kilos. Some, you know, Taylor, he's, what is he, 6'4", 245. <laughs> yeah. Big man getting inside of that sled. And we see here on the exit of 13. Look at the runners. Said, nice, just clean lines. Just slide gently off the turn. Oh, still a little skiddy. Yeah. Much better. That Good was boy. much better. Three I'm tenths better. Three tenths. That's a real challenge. That was quicker by 15 hundredths than Francesco Friedrich managed in the first heat. If the track has speeded up, and it seems it has, then it still puts the pressure on. So now then, what about this man, Taylor Austin, with a whole bunch of men that you know well, Shaq, Murray Lawrence, Cyrus Gray, Davidson D'Souza, the crew. 
This yeah. could be a huge day. I mean, we saw it yesterday with Bianca Rivi taking gold in the uh, in the monobob race. You know, if you're in the position, it's not guaranteed the next guy's going to beat you. Yeah, that's right. And these guys know that. They know that this is their home track. They want to protect this house, protect this home field advantage, and show exactly what they can do in a 4-9-1. A little bit slower, just one hundredth of a second slower than their first heat. But Taylor was beautiful down the track, and we're seeing that home field advantage right now. It still says, own the podium in that upstairs changing room, doesn't it, on the wall, and, and that's what he intends to do. Yeah, and these are beautiful lines coming through six here. Nice high controlled line, especially through seven. Yeah, even though he's a little bit far back now, that's that's a credit to the, the, the start time yeah. from Brad Hall and his team. Good speed though, better than Brad Hall at that stage, 116.4. A little bit of trouble here at the bottom of the track. He's really working hard. 30 hundreds back, so it's not going to be gold, but he will be in the medals. A guaranteed medal for Taylor Austin of Canada. Yes, boys. And a guaranteed silver for Brad Hall and Team GB. Wow, that's a, an amazing result for this team. First ever World Cup medal for all four members of this team. Yep. So very proud of this team. They've, they've fought really hard to get to this place and to come away with at least a bronze medal. Amazing result here. Total four-man World Cup starts among all four men, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that got a little bit lively there, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. He's working hard there at the bottom, and I know the feeling that he has coming into 16 here. He's hoping that he's done everything possible down this track to hold on to that position, to hold on to a medal, and then coming up that breaking stretch, looking at your time, hopefully seeing that you're still in the medals. Look at the smiles. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a huge, huge day for them. It's bronze now. We saw yesterday in the monobob, nothing is guaranteed on this track. Olympic champions can crash. Francesco Frucci crashed earlier in the week. He nearly binned it yesterday, both times, in turn 13, and he was glad to get away with it. Let's see what he can produce. Torsten Marcus, Candy Bauer, Alexander Schuller. Fastest starts in the first heat, 4.78. Do they go quicker again? 4.76. Of course they do. Yeah, this is what champions are made of. You see, not only is he not afraid of this track, you know, he's got the boys fired up, and they're ready to push as fast as possible. Opening up this lead 25 hundreds of a second. And it seems glib to say it, but he loves it when he's under pressure. He loves a race. He doesn't want to walk away. Yeah, we see here nice lines out of seven. Wow, he's really extending this lead. Four tenths of a second. Good speed. BMW sled of Frank Del Duca. Higher numbers there and still higher than the German sled. But this is where Friedrich accelerates away. Yeah, 43 hundreds. It's going to be impossible to him, for him to lose this race. There it is, 42 hundreds. Big, big win for Francesco Friedrich. Claimed two man yesterday, four man gold again today. And Brad Hall takes the silver, Taylor Austin the bronze. But it is a double winning weekend for Francesco Friedrich. And Alex Schuller there on the back handles of both the sleds. I'm sure like everybody else, and like you, they will have spent just a little bit extra double, triple, quadruple testing the brakes after what happened to their Thank teammate you. Christoph Harfer in Thank an identical so sled in the first heat. But uh, yeah, that was a much tidier looking run today than it was in the two-man. Yeah, and this is what we love to see at the bottom of the track. See all the team members getting together, a lot of camaraderie here. And like you said, we're racing the track. Yeah. We're racing the flock. It's always man versus mountain. Nothing your rivals can do can interfere with your race. That's just down to you. Francesco Friedrich claims another victory. That is his 41st four-man World Cup medal, and it is 23rd victory. Well, the only major notifiable error came out of the final corner, and by that time, it was done and dusted. If that happened in corner seven, it might have been a different story. He does make mistakes, just not that often. Francesco Friedrich victorious. Brad Hall takes second. Taylor Austin in third. A big day for Team GB and for the Canadians. Mikel Vogt, two fourth places in the two-man and the four-man. 
That podium must feel tantalizingly close, and Marcus Trichel wasn't far away either. Hansi Lochner, let's hope a few days, a couple of days of rest maybe, uh, helps that back because I'm sure that's not helping his concentration too much. Well, there you go, there on the right hand side, Torsten Margis, Francesco Friedrich, second right, and then on the far left hand side, that is Candy Bauer with uh, the tallest figure, Alexander Schuller. Became a real bobsledder, as they say, earlier in paid training when uh, Francesco put him on his head in the two-man. But no dramas in the races themselves. Well, huge thanks to Chris Spring for all his words of wisdom and for coming in and joining us throughout the weekend. Thank you to, to all the crew here in Whistler for IBSF TV. I'm Martin Haven saying thank you to you too for joining us whatever time of the day, week or night it has been. We'll be back Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Park City with Skeleton, Women's Bob and Monobob and the two and four man. Until then, bye for now.